Welcome to Best True Crime Podcast, a division of Best True Crime Books, Games, and Video, LLC. I'm your lead investigator on this case, Judith A. Yates, award-winning true crime author, a criminologist, and a paranormal explorer. Every episode is an investigation where you and I explore true crime, forensics, historic cases, dark history, and criminal theory. We discuss the cases, share information, no chatter, no commercials, no off-topic. Now, grab your crime scene kit, a notebook, and your favorite hat. This is Best True Crime Podcast. I hate clowns. I really, truly do. So for this episode, I decided to face my own fears, and I know I am not the only person who fears clowns. So let's hold hands for support while discussing the fear of clowns, the history, the causes of our fear, and what some studies have revealed. This is Season 3, Episode 2, Behind the Fear of Clowns. We are sitting in the audience of the circus, enjoying popcorn and cotton candy, being wowed by the acrobats and the dancing dogs. It's intermission, and as we nosh on stale nachos, one of the circus clowns approaches us. Do you stay or run? I am up and out of my seat, telling that clown politely to stay away from me. If he gets any closer, I will scream because I have a phobia called chorophobia, which is a phobia of clowns. The Cleveland Clinic reports chorophobics experience extreme irrational reactions when they see these clowns in person or even view pictures or videos of clowns. Some will feel faint, a shortness of breath. Others will have that nails on a chalkboard feeling. On the lower spectrum, chorophobics feel a slight discomfort. Why does someone who is created to bring laughter and joy so damn scary? Clowns are not supposed to be scary. In a 2024 article for Backstager, Zoe Dumas writes, At its heart, clowning is a performance meant to delight and entertain. It combines spoken comedy with physical talents to wow audiences and ultimately leave them in stitches. Author Eli Simon explains in his book, The Art of Clowning, that learning how to be a clown is extremely valuable for actors because they get more in touch with what's true about their comic spirit and what I call their kid spirit. Clowning is serious business. Estimates from job sites report the salaries range from around 44000 to upwards of 84000 a year. In 2020, Business Insider reported that the average pay was lower, at just about $31,589 a year. Ever hired a clown for the kid's birthday party? The normal fee is $100 to $300 an hour. But let's discuss the history of these creatures who cause such irrational fear. Clowning has a long and varied history in many forms. African jesters entertained pharaohs in the court during the 5th dynasty, around 2500 BCE. Clowns appeared before the court in ancient China. And Professor Frank T. McAndrew at Knox College explains suspiciousness can be a part of why people have chorophobia. Quote, some of the very first clowns were the court jesters and they poked fun at kings and made people in high places uncomfortable. If you go all the way back to the beginning of clownhood, they've always been bad. They're pranksters, and they play tricks. Hopi and Iroquois tribes in North America engaged clowns in sacred roles. And, of course, the circus always employed clowns to delight and entertain. People who are interested in professional clowning partake in prestigious group memberships and serious education. They can join the World Clown Association and become members of Clowns of America International. So, people in funny outfits with painted faces and eccentric hairdos have been entertaining since humankind began, and it's serious business. Still, 
What causes our fear of clowns? One 2019 study, Report on American Fears, by Berta and Rappaport for Chapman University, created a nationwide poll on chorophobia. The study concluded that chorophobia is present among both adults and children. The phobia is cross-cultural. There has been a lack of focused research, so not a lot is known about this phobia. A formal paper written by Stott called Clowns on the Verge of a Nervous Breakdown appeared in the Journal for Early Modern Cultural Studies. The piece discusses a psychometric questionnaire to study chorophobia called the Fear of Clowns Questionnaire. The questionnaire revealed about 53.5% said they were afraid of clowns to some degree. 5% of those people responded they were extremely afraid of them. And that 5% reporting this extreme fear of clowns is slightly higher than those reported for many other phobias, and that includes a phobia of heights and a fear of flying. Chorophobics are most likely female, and the phobia of clowns decreases with age. In a separate study, the Cleveland Clinic reports researchers have noted signs of chorophobia in children as young as three. And you may be more at risk for developing this specific phobia disorder if you already have anxiety disorder or phobias. Research into chorophobia has revealed why people develop a clown phobia. The strongest factor was how clown face paint plays a large role in appearance and disguise. Clown makeup creates negative feelings because the person behind the mask is human-like, but still not so human. It's that facade that creates this irrational fear. Also, an essential part of the clown is what the researchers noted as exaggerated facial features conveying a direct sense of threat. Let's look at serial killer John Wayne Gacy, also called the Killer Clown. His character, Pogo the Clown, went to parties to entertain and delight, but one noted feature is how the ends of his painted-on smile ended in points, not rounded as normal clowns. Professional clowns note this detail can and often scares children. Some phobics see clown face paint as hiding emotion. I was researching my book, Bully to Death, and talking to a few teens, and we were discussing our fear. Of course, the fear of clowns came up. One young girl asked, why would someone have to paint on a smile? Studies also found that clown makeup is reminiscent of death with the very pale face, the slashes of red, and this creates repugnance in people. Dr. Rami Nadar is a registered psychologist practicing at Vancouver's North Shore Stress and Anxiety Clinic. He explains in an article in Time magazine, and they have these large artificial displays of emotion. So you have a clown with a painted face and a big smile, but you don't really know what they're actually feeling. There's this inherent mistrust that what they're presenting to you isn't what they're actually feeling. End quote. Studies also reveal chorophobia also occurs because of the clown's behaviors and actions. A clown's behavior is unpredictable. Remember the clown car at the circus where the little car pulls up and a whole bunch of clowns pile out? Or flowers appearing from the tip of a black wand if the clown is doing magic. Humans like predictable behavior and routine. Family members may suffer from chorophobia and it begins with learned behavior. So we learn to fear clowns because our family members also feared them. One of the major causes of chorophobia is the negative portrayals of clowns in popular culture. Hey kid, want a balloon? There may have been a frightening experience with a clown. Children as young as three can suffer from chorophobia, 
but they cannot express themselves as well as older kids, so it's carried through their lives. One study discovered this last cause had the lowest level of agreement. Quote, this indicates that life experience alone is not a sufficient explanation for why people are afraid of clowns. David Kaiser is the talent director for Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus. He was interviewed by Smithsonian Magazine in 2013. Even going back to ancient times, clowns have always had a dark side. In one way, the clown has always been an impish spirit, Kaiser disclosed, as he's kind of grown up. He's always been about fun, but part of that fun includes a bit of mischief. End quote. Although a phobia of clowns is rare, Clowns appear in all manners of creepiness. To celebrate Halloween, you'll see all sorts of costumes, animatronics, and media designed to scare you by clowns. One psychologist explains people attend these clown-themed movies and haunted houses and such because, as scary as it may be, they are teaching themselves about preparedness and face danger. It's the same psychology as people who love true crime. They read and watch as much as possible to try to figure out how the criminal mind works. Thus, their fascination for serial killers. And they are subconsciously taking notes. A, if this happens to me, exercise without getting too close to this exercise. Going back to our seats in the circus, and the show must go on. Intermission is over, and we have eaten all of our nachos. The circus clown who approached us has ambled away in his big floppy shoes, crazy wig, and colorful face paint. But I am going to keep an eye on him in case he comes back. What will you do? Thank you for joining me on this investigation, exploring true crime, forensics, historic cases, dark history, and criminal theory. This is Best True Crime Podcast. No chatter, no commercials, no off-topic. I do hope you will subscribe. This podcast runs off donations only. You can drop us a donation, $35 or more, and I'll send you a signed book. Just go to www.besttruecrime.com. My name is Judith A. Yates, award-winning true crime author, a criminologist, and a paranormal explorer. Thank you for joining me on Best True Crime Podcast, a division of Best True Crime Books, Games, and Video, LLC. Be safe out there.